Are you here? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we love it when you're here. Let me take a moment to welcome you and hopefully make you feel right at home on the Paul Leslie Hour. We're about to have Melanie Cannon, a great singer and recording artist, on the line in just a moment. Melanie's a phenomenal talent in country music. You know, Vern Gosden, the late great country legend, said this about our guest, Melanie Cannon. She's one of the best female voices I've ever had the pleasure to sing with. Well, here in 2023, Melanie Cannon has released a whole album of songs, either co-written or made famous by Vern Gosden. It's entitled, A Tribute to Vern Gosden, and we cannot recommend it enough. Well, maybe we can. We're recommending it now. Before we bring out the interview with Melanie Cannon, we want to cordially invite you to subscribe to the Paul Leslie Hour on YouTube. And you could go on Facebook and like us. Ding, ding, hit that bell. It helps us in a lot of ways, and you'll be able to keep up with all the interviews and reviews we release. You know, I get the feeling it's time to start this interview portion. What do you say, ladies and gentlemen? Are we ready to hear from Melanie Cannon? Hello. Melanie Cannon, this is Paul Leslie. How are you? Hey, Paul. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going great. Good. How about you? Doing good, man. Doing really good. That's good to hear. So you're joining us from the Volunteer State, correct? That's right. Just outside of Nashville. All right. Well, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. Yes, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to have you all listening in. We have with us one of the best singers out there recording and performing today. I think Melanie Cannon is really an exceptional vocalist. She's a singer. I first heard about this latest record of hers. It's called A Tribute to Vern Gosden from SavingCountryMusic.com. And folks, it's 13 great songs. And in addition to Melanie Cannon, there's some real top shelf collaborations. So tell us about... Uh, the first time you became aware of this great singer, Vern Gosden. Wow. So <laughs> my first memories of Vern, gosh, they go way back. I tell you that. I don't remember actually the first time I, we moved to a place called Kingston Springs when I was five years old and just outside of Nashville. And, you know, dad was already in the business doing his thing and Vern just happened to live down the street from us. And from what I understand, Daddy, you know, got wind that Vern lived down the road and he was about to cut a record. So he, you know, being the songwriter that he was, he took some songs down there and knocked on his door. <laughs> from that point forward, I think Vern had dinner with us about three or four times a week, if nothing else. We'd see him all the time. You know, my daddy and him went to breakfast all the time and he just kind of became, became a fixture when I was a little kid. You know, it wasn't like there was some, you know, big star sitting at the table because there was always somebody cool sitting at the table. You know, they were just daddy's friends to me. And for all the folks who are tuned in, just for the record, no pun intended, Yeah, your dad is Buddy Cannon, who's been a guest a couple times, a great songwriter, a great recording artist. Tell us about what life was like growing up in the Cannon household. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's funny because, you know, daddy was, uh, he, he hasn't, he's been a sober, he's been sober since I was 16 years old and I'm the youngest of three. So, uh, my mom had a lot to put up with raising three daughters, you know, with him being a road musician and, and then also a, you know, active drinker and having fun with all of his friends all the time. But the one thing that she always made him do was, was there was always no drinking and no drugs at our house. So what happened at our house is where well, we always laugh now as adults and say it's kind of like the recovery house where everybody would come to eat and sleep and catch up on, you know, their rest, take a shower if they needed one. You know, mom would talk to them about their, uh, you know, if they needed to make up with their wife or, you know, I mean, it was I got the we got the best versions of all these men that came through the door because, you know, they were all sober when they came to our house and you never know who it was going to be. Dean Dillon slept on our couch a lot. <laughs> 
Now that's bragging rights right there. Well, you know, <laughs> you, you say that until you, you look, you know, when you look back, it's kind of cool. But when it's going on, you're like, huh, that guy's been sleeping on the couch for three days. That's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, they were just daddy's friends to us, you know, and the music was, was secondary, you know? Well, you know, when you get to be around somebody when you're just a, a little kid, it's a different perspective than somebody who walks up to Vern Gosden and they see him as this legend. So what was Vern Gosden like just as a person, as a, as the guy? Oh, well, he, I tell you what, he, um, to me, if it wasn't for him, because my dad was still actively drinking and using drugs at the time, I was about 11 when Vern, you know, told my dad, look, that kid can sing. I hear her and, and, we need to get her up here and let her be part of this singing that we're doing. Cause they would, you know, sit around the table and sing all the time. And, and, and there was one, one night in particular that me and my dad recall all the time that, that they brought me upstairs finally. And, and cause I would be downstairs singing through a microphone, just dying for my daddy to listen. And, and he just was, wasn't paying attention, but Vern was listening. And so Vern pulled us, pulled me up there one night and they, I didn't know the words to golden rings at the time. I mean, I was 11, you know, and it was a new song. So it was, they, they wrote down the words for me and then we sang the same song for about three or four hours. And Vern just taught me how to move and change parts and to follow. And, and, you know, just in that moment, I, I, I didn't realize until, you know, of course, decades later that it, he wasn't just teaching me how to sing a harmony part. He was showing me what harmony was and how it worked. And, and, and it just, it stuck. And, and so to me, I'm a, I'm a harmony singer at heart because of those moments with them and, and getting to like really learn that, you know, Vern would always say harmony is the most important part of a song, you know, and if you listen to his records, to his music, it sounds like it really is, you know. Absolutely. So I, I sat there and, and didn't realize what I was getting, but that was a master class in, in, uh, harmony singing if I ever had one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I first found out about this album from the website SavingCountryMusic.com. And when yep. I saw, oh, goodness, a tribute to Vern Gosden, I thought, oh, that that's for me. That's for me. Ooh, so yeah. what gave you this idea? What got this idea going? Because it's, it's been a while since the last record of yours. Yep. Well, you know, Daddy and us, when Vern passed away, we started talking about all the times, you know, we sang so much together, so many days, so many years that would, you know, we started talking about how we don't even have a single recording of any of it. We never thought it would stop. Like the things like that, you just think will go on forever. And then one day they're over. And we decided then, like, you know, we've got to do something and get, you know, I want some of this. We wanted some of it recorded and down. So we had it, you know, just for ourselves. And so that's kind of where the project started was just us really wanting to do something to honor Vern for ourselves and for him, you know, and it just, it took off. I mean, it became, you know, had a little life of its own and, and we played it for a couple of people and they're like, Oh, let us be a part of it, you know? And, and so, you know, people started wanting to sing with me on it and, you know, we had to cut a couple more songs, you know, so it's, and it was a long, a long process and, you know, it sat around for a while, you know, there's a few years it just sat, you know, sat there after we did it. And, and, you know, there's not really a place for country, country music on country radio, if you know what I mean. So, you know, it didn't like there's going to be any major label action or anybody wanting to throw a bunch of money behind it. So we just did it because we wanted to. And then completing it became just a mission that we had because it needed to be done. And now, now that it's done, it's, I know for sure it's the, it's my heart music and it's the best thing I've ever done and probably the best record I'll ever make. It is a fantastic album. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. So how did you go about picking the songs? And how, how did you go about deciding what kind of an interpretation you were going to do? Yeah, well, you know, the thing that most people do, you know, people try to try to cover songs from, you know, artists like Vern and, you know, a lot of guys have tried to cover Vern songs and things like that. And it's it's not an easy thing to do. You know, I mean, he's there's only one Vern Gosden. So the the thing that most people do that I think is wrong is they try to change it. You know, first of all, we just. We did these songs exactly like Vern did them. 
We didn't change melodies. We didn't change harmonies. We didn't change it. We did it like he did it because he did it with intention. Those songs, the words were written with intention. The melodies were with intention. The harmonies were with intention. You know, it's like, it's not like it was on accident that those records sounded like they did. They knew exactly what they were doing. And most people's mistake in trying to cover something like that is they try to make it theirs. And, and really you just got to go in there and do it like Vern did it because it was done for a reason that way. And I think that that's what we did. We, we just went in there and cut it just like they would. There's not a bunch of filler guitar parts and a bunch of still, you know, still guitar licks. And there's not, you know, there wasn't that stuff in Vern's music. It was all about the words and the voices. So we kind of did it like he would have wanted me to. Hmm. Do yeah. you have a favorite Vern Gosden song? Oh my goodness. I tell you, if it's, it's, that's such a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, cause my daddy wrote some and there's, you know, some of my favorite songwriters are, are on there. Vern, you know, Max, Max D, Max, you know, it's like, there's so many songs, but the one that I, of this, of this group of songs, one of my favorite ones that's on there is a song that Vern never recorded. So this is a, a thing that, that nobody's going to realize it's a burn song until they look at the credits on this record and realize that he wrote it. He wrote it with my daddy and Dean, and it's called Is It That Time Again? And it's just this really simple, smoky barroom, piano-driven, you know, tune that is real swingy. And it sounds like you're sitting in the smoky barroom, you know, right next to the person that's been there for too many days. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just exactly like Vern would have wanted it to sound. I, I really believe that. And he never cut it, but that's how I think he would have wanted me to do it. And and I promise you, I, it's really becoming my favorite song on the whole album that we've done. But there, there are so many of his songs that, I mean, I could go through the chiseled in stone and, you know, I mean, just so many. But th there's a whole nother group of songs that I didn't cut yet. So there's room for more. Uh-huh. Yeah. That song you were talking about, Is It That Time Again? Yes, sir. I thought I've never heard this before, but it's really different. It's really great. I imagine that if Frank Sinatra had heard <laughs> this, he would have said, you know what? Because, you know, Frank Sinatra had on his passport for occupation, he put saloon singer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would have yeah. wanted to sing that. Oh, yeah, that's great. My my daddy will love hearing those words. <laughs> I'll have to jazzy. share that with Daddy and Dean. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the note of Dean Dillon, yeah, I got to ask him one time about what I think is one of the just all time great country songs. I love this song, and you did it so well. You had Cody Jenks on this one. Yeah. When I asked Dean about it, he started to sing. Set him up, Joe, and play Walk in the Floor. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That one's been done by so many different people and has so many great songwriters on it. Tell me about your approach to that one. Oh, man. Well, that's one that, you know, I've been singing that song since I was a little kid, you know? So it's like I literally, you know, they wrote it when I was little. And uh, and so it's been a part of my life. I've always I've always sang it, you know, and so to me, it's like it's just natural to cut a song like that. And, uh, you know, when I when I was doing it, I, you know, I, I actually was going to cut it by myself. And I, Jinx, I, you know, is one of my dear friend Cody Jinx is one of my you know good buddies. And and I just wanted him to be a part of some of it. And I, I sent him the record and he sent me a message back and said, Mel, you suck. And I thought, well, Lord, that's not <laughs> nice, you know. He said, you should have warned me before you sent me this record. I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I started to listen to it. But then when I, you know, asked him if he'd be a part of it, he said he'd love to. And, and set him up, Joe was just a fun one to get to share with him. I hope I don't get in trouble for this. But <laughs> uh -oh. I ain't scared of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Bob Dylan song. Scarlet Town, I think, is the one. And I remember hearing that, you know, he says in that song, the lyrics are, set him up, Joe, play Walk in the Floor. Right. Do you think he heard the Vern Gosden record and he thought, that's pretty cool, I'm, I'm going to take that? Well, you know, I would think Bob Dylan had to have, have heard set him up, Joe, at one time or another. He had to. But, I, you know, I think that my daddy kind of laughs like, you know, hey, if you're going to get, you know, your lyrics caught by somebody, let it be Bob Dylan, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's going to be anybody, let it be him. 
But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I would think that he that he had to have heard it. You know, what what I mean, everybody's heard "Set Him Up, Joe." Yeah, what's well, a compliment? <laughs> yeah, man, that's how my daddy took it. That's for sure. Good. That's how daddy took it. He didn't. My dad was not offended in the least. If it was or if it wasn't, you know, had something to do with their song, he was. Yeah, he was honored if anything. Have you heard any feedback from Dean Dillon about what he thinks of the songs that he wrote and your interpretation of them? Well, you know what, Dean has uh, I, I, a lot of people don't know this, but my first professional job as a singer, I was 13 and I got hired to do a demo and it, I got hired not by my daddy, but I got hired by Dean Dillon. And I went in and did a demo session for him and Hank Cochran and a whole bunch of them. And uh, he has been literally since that time I was 13. Since then, he's been my biggest fan. My, you know, besides my daddy, my biggest supporter in the business, my biggest encourager, you know, I'm all, he, he, he's, he is my favorite songwriter on the planet and he knows it. And not only that, he's my favorite human. And I tell him all the time that he's the coolest person I've ever met in every decade of my life. And I'm 50 this year. So he's still five decades later. He is still the coolest person I've ever known in my whole life. <laughs> But I think I think he's pretty proud of me, and I think he's grateful that I sing his songs. And these aren't the only songs of his that I sing. There's a lot of them that I do that are not, you know, Vern Vern songs. But but uh, you know, a lot of them are peep songs that people don't know because I've always loved Dean's catalog so much that I just I've always you know just just dove into it and and found the you know songs that nobody else knows and. And those are there's those are some of my favorite songs written today for sure. And most people don't know him. He's definitely an incredible songwriter, and I think, in my humble opinion, he's an underrated performer. Oh yeah, yeah. See what we we grew up with Dean's voice, and then you know Straight started. You know when George Strait started on the scene, it was um, you know to us it's like oh wow it's like it's like Dean. You know <laughs> to us it was like all of a sudden Dean was a star. You know, but he had this whole different you know persona. But I mean, really, that was um, if it wasn't for for Dean Dillon, there would be no George Strait. And I mean, George Strait will tell you that too. He, you know, it was an entire persona. That, that was Dean Dillon that George Strait took to the masses, you know. And I just think it was the way that, you know, God has plans and, and I think that's the way it was made. And, and, and Dean is, I think he's pretty, pretty good with how things went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one song, I think it's really an exceptional cut on this record and a fantastic song. I think your dad co wrote Dream of Me. Yes, he did. What do, what do you think about, or how did you interpret that one? Oh man, see, that's another one because these, these songs that, 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 you know, are so close to me as a human, like, they're just part of the, you know, my very being, you know. So I, I don't remember a time when Dream of Me wasn't a song that was either been, being sung around me and I was singing harmony to or that I was singing myself. So songs like that, I mean, to me, I, I have to do those songs. I mean, it, it's, they call me to do them, you know, but there's just, to, people interpret songs different. And, and I, now I know looking back, I, I love those songs when I was little, but you know, to me, it was like more, more of what I, I, I wish like when my, when I would hear my dad sing that song, or I'd hear Vern sing that song. I mean, that's like, you know, to me, it was my connection to them, you know? I mean, dream of me and I'll be dreaming of you. I mean, they're all headed off on the road doing their thing. And, you know, there I am back at home still singing the song with them. You know, it's like, hmm. that's, I was connected to them through those songs. And I mean, dream of me is just, I mean, one of those that's part of who I am. What was it that you think made Vern Gosden especially great? I mean, it's tempting to just listen to his voice and say, you know, say no more than his his great singing. But right. maybe there's something that we don't see. Well, I'll tell you, Vern was a music lover. He loved great songs. And, I mean, he he the the songs had to be good. There there was no flu he didn't he didn't think bad singers were funny. He didn't think bad songwriting was funny. He was serious about it. He took it very seriously, and that's why the songs that you hear Vern do there's not a whole lot of fluff if you listen to Vern Gosden records. I mean, you you better dig deep if you find one that you think's going to be a you know one that you'd find on somebody's record today because there's not a whole lot of them. And he uh, he really was. 
it was his craft and, and he was an artist and his voice, it, you know, it was, it was what we were lucky enough to, 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 to hear his voice, but those songs, if it wasn't for those songs and, and the timing, the way he, he sang his timing of things and, you know, just, uh, he just, his interpretation, I mean, it, it, it changed the face of music, you know. I mean, every artist at the time, the Merle Haggards, the Way, uh, the Willies, the Waylands, all of them. I mean, Burn, you know, changed everything for. I mean, even the way they listened, you know. Hmm. Interesting stuff. I have a quote here from Willie Nelson. Yeah. He says, "Melanie Cannon is one of the best singers I know." Mm-hmm. What is it like? You know, you have you you have worked with Willie Nelson in the recording studio. Oh, yeah. And here he is on your new album, A a Tribute to Vern Gosden. Yep. And you're doing a duet with him until the end. Yeah. (laughs) So crazy. What is that like? Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Some stuff that, you know, when people say it to you like that, it's like I'm not even brave enough to dream stuff like that. So (laughs) to think that it really actually happened is just insane. But uh, Willie and and my daddy have become, you know, they're uh, they're truly and at this stage in life, they've become two of the best friends that they've ever had. And I'm I have been lucky enough to get to know Willie and his family and you know his kids and his sons and daughters and and you know granddaughters and it's you know we're all family. And uh, so getting to have him on there. I'm telling you, I can't go, oh, my gosh, that's Willie Nelson. I just, it's Willie, you know, it's just Willie that I get to sing with. And uh, I get to sing on his records, too, which is just like, honestly, as a as a harmony singer, truly just an honor of a lifetime. I mean, knowing that he chooses me every time he makes a record and has for the last, you know, 14 or 15 years. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm Willie's girl. Then just, I mean, what an honor. You can't get much better than that. <laughs> I was going to ask you about this gentleman. A lot of people know you from your association with another great singer, Jamie Johnson. Yes, sir. He joined you on Way Down Deep, Doyle Lawson right. and Jamie Johnson. Is Jamie Johnson as mysterious as he seems? <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny question. I love it. You know what? I'll tell you, he is um, honest to God. I've been friends with Jamie. I was... We were talking about it. He always is right and I'm wrong because he, he has a mind like an elephant. He don't forget anything. But I say we were friends, you know, been friends about 23 years. He says 24. So somewhere between under 25, but close. And, uh, we, we met in the studio singing harmony together, you know, and we've done a lot of singing together through the years and, uh, he uh, has gone, we, we both have gone through addiction issues together. We, you know, stopped, you know, doing the bad stuff together. And, and uh, now we get to, you know, we've been to valleys together. So now we get to go to mountains together. You know, we get to go to the top together too. I just was with him on stage and got to sing with him when he was inducted into the at Grand Ole Opry, which is what he's dreamed of since he was a child, you know, and, and as, as serious and as tough as he looks on the outside, I have to tell you, he ain't scared. He's a Marine, but he is one of the kindest, most loving people you'll ever meet in your whole life. He would give you the shirt off his back, and that is the honest to God's truth. And uh, now don't mess with him, and surely don't mess with me, because, you know, he ain't afraid to get somebody. <laughs> but he is he is truly one of the most giving, to a fault at times, most giving humans I've ever known. And uh, I'm, I'm lucky that I get to sing with him because he's one of the greatest voices that will ever be in my lifetime. But he's also one of my best friends. So getting to share that kind of stuff together is really, really epic. What is the best thing about being Melanie Cannon? Ooh. Wow, I don't know. That's a that's a loaded question. Wow, that I, I the fact that I made it to fifty being me, it's epic that I'm actually even alive. So I mean, I I got that going for me. But uh, I tell you, I've got a great family. I'm surrounded by you know, my parents, my sisters, my boys, and you know, just I've got a great circle of friends. And you know, I'm, I live a life that's got I'm I'm encircled by music at all times, and and I get to live what most people would consider you know a, a dream for my job job and you know i just i feel like i've i've become more and more thankful as as the days go by and time get, goes on that i just get to continue to sing for a living and you know what if if anything else i'm i'm lucky i know that there's something that stayed with me a long time now i remember you writing this on facebook and it Uh-oh. was just 
<laughs> yeah, that sounds scary, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just a post that you had made about the realities of this business. Mm. Like people sometimes they see the lights and they they see this the the lights and the the dim lights, the thick smoke and the loud loud music, so to speak. Right. But right. they don't see a lot of the things that goes into this, and it's it's a really hard road. Yeah. Do you remember this post? Um, I, you know what, I posted similar stuff because I know a lot of us do, you know, the the bright lights and the and the shiny stuff all, you know, makes everybody think that everything's great for all of us, and and you, there's a a side to what we do and a side to who we are as artists and musicians and songwriters and that that is not that bright, you know, none of it shines and the lights don't come on very often. You know, and, uh, so we, it's a, there's definitely a darker side to, to what we do than, than many people would ever suspect. And many people don't understand. Um, how can you, you know, have all that and, and still be down that, you know, go down there. But it's, um, part of what makes our artistry, I guess, so special. But it's also, um, a true reality of, of this is real life. And, it's not all about lights and it's not all about applause and crowds. It's about having to function daily and uh, get by without anybody clapping for you. Hmm. Well put. Yeah. Well, everybody out there, do yourself a favor. Get yep. this album. It's called A Tribute <laughs> to Vern Gosden, Melanie Cannon, and her website, www.melaniecannon.com. Dot com m e l o n i e c a n n o n that's it and thank you so much for spending time with us oh man thank you thanks for letting me talk about the record i sure am proud of it you should be proud of it it's wonderful well thank you very much sir <laughs> all right well i hope to connect with you on down the road yeah man let's do it all let's right. talk again soon sounds good god bless you too bye 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 Thank you for stopping by today. If you enjoyed our program, consider telling a friend about it. The Paul Leslie Hour is made possible through people just like you. So you want to keep the show going, right? Go to thepaulleslie.com. That's thepaulleslie.com. Click on Support the Show. And thanks to everyone who contributes. Performance of the intro music is courtesy of John Primerano, The Entertainer, written by Scott Joplin. End credit theme music is courtesy of John Primerano, the traditional song, Corina, Corina. Your announcer is Dan Gold. Hey, that's me. The show is hosted and produced by Paul Leslie. And we'll see you next time on the Paul Leslie Hour.